Welcome to New Life Online Bible School. I'm happy to be here with you and share some truths from the Bible. My name is Kristen Teikari. I'm uh, Aril Teikari's wife, happy wife. And we serve the Lord together here in Sandnes, Norway. Um, so my uh, passion, I think my main passion is worship, praise, and, and just uh, lifting up the name of Jesus. That's kind of maybe my main ministry. Um, but I, first, before I, before I um, continue, um, I ha I'd like to just pray and, and put this session into the hands of God. God, I thank you that you are here with us, and I thank you that we can ask you to be here with your presence. Thank you that you're always together with us, and I, but I also pray that you would guide me as I'm sharing the word. I pray that you would give me guidance along the way, and so that I point out things that are on your heart, Father. Uh, I pray that um, um, whatever is needed to come forth would come forth today, Father. And I pray that you would inspire people that are listening to uh, to lift up your name, to worship you with all their hearts and uh, all their minds and all their souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, so my, uh, my um, the title that I chose to have is Worship, It's a Matter of the Heart. Because there are so many times we could be focused on maybe the wrong things, to be focused on outer, outward things and, and things of their appearance and how things sound. And, and uh, my, myself being a musician, I've been in the worship team for, for many, many years. Uh, you know, sometimes we can be really caught up in all the technical stuff. And that's important, that has its place. I don't, I don't speak against having a rehearsal and, and uh, being a good musician and stewarding our gifts, but the core of everything is that it's, it's about the heart. It's about uh, a relationship with God and, uh, and not about performance at all. So let's turn to Matthew 14. Uh, I borrow my husband's Bible here. It's a very nice English Bible. I have just a small one that I bring on my journeys, but uh, this is uh, a better one to use now. So turn to... Um, well, I think actually, maybe I've written, no, uh, Math Matthew 14. Let me see if I've got that wrong or not. Um, at least this is a good start. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, that's, that's supposed to be, uh, oh, and no, I forgot about this now, but I will try to, yep. Uh, this is about, I'll just turn everyone up, sorry, that's wrong. Yeah, that's the one. So, <laughs> my first fault here is that it's not supposed to be Matthew, but it's supposed to be Mark. Mark chapter 14. And we'll read from verses 3 through 9. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it out on his head. But there were some who were indignant, indignant about among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wa wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me for you have the poor with you always, and wherever, whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you don't have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for my bur burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this mom, woman, woman has done will always be told as a memorial to her. Amen. So... This is actually a very good picture of what worship is like. Uh, as, as it's written here, 300 denarii, and if I'm not wrong, I think it's maybe a year's salary. 
uh, or at least that is a lot of money. I think it's a year's salary that she gave, and it just she just chose to pour it out on Jesus' head to anoint him. Um, that was something valuable, and that's what she gave. That's what she offered. And worship is about giving something of value to the one that we love. Uh, but at the same time, this woman was criticized, it's, it's actually reads here, and they criticized her sharply. So as she poured this oil and she poured her worship, so to speak, on Jesus, she was criticized sharply. And it's, you know, in one of the other gospels it says that um, that was um, Judas, who, who, and he was, he was said to be a thief at that point. I think it was John who said that, and he was, you know, one of the inner circle, so he would have known what was, what was going on. And uh, and people, people who are um, uh, well, the natural man or the carnal people, they will never understand true worship. You will you will always be at risk of being criticized by, by people who don't know what it's all about. So that's uh, when you give your dearest you uh, and and the things that are valuable to you. Just be ready. Also be be ready to also be criticized by people, but actually, to be honest, it's not worth thinking about. I mean, uh, being focused on, on Jesus and, and God is more important than anything. Um, but it's the sacrifice. It's a sacrifice of worship. Let's turn to another place in the scripture where Jesus encounters the, the woman, the Samaritan woman, and we'll read from, let's just turn the page here. John chapter 4. And, just so that I don't forget. Chapter 4, uh, verse 19. Uh, here, the Samaritan woman has has uh, met with Jesus. She comes at the well at the time, uh, time of the day when no one else is there because she knows that she n she's being talk talked about. There are ru rumors about her in the city because she's a woman who has had more than one man and she's probably a prostitute. Um, so, um, but Jesus welcomes her also uh, to meet with her. And she says here, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our, fa our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you Jews say that in, in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. So she is focused on the outward things. She is pro focused on where, maybe also on when, maybe also on how, all these outward things. But then Jesus directs her attention to something else. Jesus said to her, woman, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know that we, what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But, but the, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So J Jesus directs his attention to spirit, worship in spirit, and in truth. Not the outward things, not where, when, why. Maybe why, <laughs> but not the what and how at the same time. Because the focus, Jesus uh, focuses on the heart, the heart attitude. How the heart... Um, um, kind of um, connects with, with the Lord. And in spirit, that's, uh, in, in my opinion and in, in my view, that sounds like something that is spirit to spirit. I mean, that it's like deep calls on to deep, that, that we, in, as, uh, as spiritual beings and as born-again Christians, we, you know, our, our spirit has been born again, we have a revived, <laughs> so to speak, spirit, and we can connect with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wishes in us, and 
And so it's like a spirit to spirit thing, a connection there. And also it's about being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, when, we, when we do worship, uh, even at, at home or in church or wherever it would be, uh, we're also always supposed to be led by the Spirit. We're always supposed to hear from God or at least sense in what the, which direction that God is, is pointing us and is directing us and guiding us. And that, I think, believe that takes practice, that takes uh, experience because you kind of learn um, in the secret place. That's where you learn it. And I'll get back to that. Um, and then in truth, it's about being real, being yourself, uh, being honest with God, and also about not performing, not having the focus on performance. And that's easy enough when you're at home in your in your in, um, in your room, you know, in your closed room where you where you do worship with God. But when we are in the char church, there might be many many people listening to you, and there might be people who really um, love the way you are playing or singing, and they also, I mean, encourage you afterwards. Then. Um, it's, it's important to keep that in mind the whole time that we are not here to perform. We are here to do our best. We are here to, I mean, to uh, steward our gifts, to practice also in advance. But at the same time, God can, I mean, it, it's, it's really about the heart. And if, if our heart is full of pride, then it will stand the way for the Lord to move. Actually, uh, I don't know if I, uh, you know, there is another teaching also from, from last year's Fivefold Conference that where I share some, some other things about worship. I don't, don't know if I, if I mentioned it there, but um, I had, have heard a recorded tape or a recording of one time uh, there was like um, um, a win. I wasn't there myself, but I heard it recorded. Um, there was like a, a gust of wind coming to a place where people were worshiping could kind of hear the, the wind coming and it was the wind of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the funny thing, at least for me, is that <laughs> prior to that, right, right before the, the, um, the wind came in, you know, this presence, the holy presence of God came in, there were some people worshipping uh, and I'm sure they worshipped from their heart because otherwise the, the Holy Spirit wouldn't come like that. Uh, but the thing is that the, the guitar, they were playing guitar and singing. And to be honest, being just from a musical perspective, I wasn't impressed at all because the, the guitar was out of tune and it wasn't really, you know, um, nice singing. It was it's okay, but, you know, everything, it wasn't really what you would expect, you know. It, but they were singing from their heart and God answered to that. And that was actually a very good example for me to, to be reminded of that, wow, that's, that's the place where God wants us to be. Um, so let's go to the next one. And that's, as I mentioned, it's sometimes it's, it's people can, you know, mostly if you are a worship leader or in a worship team, you will be somewhere, place where people can see you easily. And that makes sense because you're leading people. Like the preacher or the people who leads the meeting will also be a person who um, people will kind of see. And the, 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 the attress, uh, attention is, of course, naturally drawn towards those that are leading. And that's not wrong in itself. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we must always be focused that we should draw the attention towards him. That's why we are there. We're not, we are not here to draw the attention towards our own musical skills, our own beautiful voice or whatever it is. It's always to honor him. So um, I will, let's turn to Psalms 51. And we'll have a look at scripture here. Is that that's from a Psalm? written by David. We'll also t talk a little about him later on. Psalms 51, verses 15 to 17. And this is in the context of what David has been rebuked by the prophet Nathan. Uh, 
there is, uh, yeah, we'll turn to that scripture later on, but then it's, it reads here in Psalms 51, verses 15 to 17. Um, o Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not dis desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a bro broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Um, and that doesn't mean that we are supposed to just lay ourselves flat and let everyone tread upon us in that sense. But to have a broken spirit means that you have a humble heart towards God. When God points out, out something in you, you have uh, an attitude that, okay, God, you are right. <laughs> you, know, you give him the right. Um, um, and it's, it reads that God does not delight in burnt offering. It can seem like a contradiction here because God was the one assigning all these burnt offerings, all these offerings. So, but that it, it's not, that's not the point. The thing is that, you know, elsewhere in the, in the Old Testament, God rebukes the Israelite, Israelite people for just honoring God in, like, with their appearance. They're just coming to God, doing their religious duty, but not doing it from their heart coming with the burnt offerings, coming with whatever. Uh, they were, um, they were um, asked to from the law, you know, the law of Moses. Uh, so if God has to choose between burnt offerings and these outward stuff, religious duties, and a, um, a broken heart that is soft and, and moldable for God, then he would definitely choose the later one. Uh, and we'll just um, have a look at uh, the context. We will not read the whole story, but uh, 2 Samuel 12, uh, from verse 7. In, this is the con in, uh, I'll just explain a little about the context. That's when, uh, that's the year when David didn't go to war, you know, he was, he was a bit I idle, he bored himself maybe, and he, he saw this uh, Bathsheba, who was a beautiful lady, and she was bathing on the, on the rooftop. And, um, and then he uh, got her husband, Uriah, killed, and the whole story is written here in 2 Samuel. Then God speaks to the prophet Nathan, and um, it says in um, uh, verse 7, Second Samuel 12, 7, Then Nathan say to said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord of God Israel, I anointed you king of Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. And um, verse 9, Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. So Nathan, or God, reveals to Nathan the whole story that David was hoping that would never be revealed. And then how could David react? He could have killed the prophet because he was in charge. He was the king. He, he could have, you know, there are um, different people in the different kings that are not as humble as, as David is. And just the fact that this is written in the Bible is um, quite amazing because uh, mo um, usually the historical documents about kings in other cultures, they only speak about the hero, th the things, uh, the heroic acts that the kings have done. But the Bible speaks about the whole life, you know, it speaks about the ups and downs, the Wrong choices, the right choices, and this is one of the wrong choices. So how did David react? Um, that's written in verse 13. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. So he, he uh, takes the reproach from God. He says, yes, God is right, and I... Um, repent. He repented at the point at that point, and 
I think that's, uh, it's, it's written in the Bible that, that David is a man of, was a man of the God's own heart, and I think this is the core of it, that he, was a heart, he had a heart that was uh, repentant when God spoke to him. He always uh, turned to God. Um, but that's important to keep in mind when we, um, yeah, uh, that God resists the proud. And we turn to First Peter five. First Peter five, and verse um, yeah, verse five, and then we'll, we'll read a few verses here. Uh, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed in hum with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's just important to keep in mind. And also that we should not, um, I can just refer to that maybe. Uh, Psalms 75, four, it says, lift, up, lift not up the horn of personal aggrandizement. Aggrandizement, I had to look up at that word because that's not the word I usually would use and I don't think I've heard it before. But that's, this is from quotation from the, the Amplified Bible. And that's usually been used in a context of enlarging things too much, I mean, to boast, boastful, and to, or like, a personal aggrandizement is more of like a boastful way of uh, making your way to, to a higher precision. Um, so, but God, as we read in, in First Peter, God is the one to exalt us in due time. When he sees that we're ready, and that might take a long time, longer than we uh, <laughs> normally like, maybe. But God, he, know, you know, he knows our heart. He knows when we're ready. He's very, um, he's very aware of the fact that we could easily fall into the pit of being uh, proud. And that's something we need to, I mean, to be aware of the whole time. Uh, luckily, and uh, God is, you know, when we have uh, uh, the Spirit of God living in us, He will speak to us, and it's up to us to be open for His, uh, for what He says to us. But we must always, with the help of God and the Holy Spirit, resist the pitfall of pride. That's really, really important. We are not here, and we're not ministering for our own sake. We are ministering to draw attention towards Him, and to uh, just to rub it all in. <laughs> you know, we can read about the fall of Lucifer in Isaiah 14 because he was he was a worship leader, and we don't want to fall. I mean, it's, it's well. It's a bit different, you know, we don't have his power and all these things, but still, it's, it's, I mean, some of the, the traits are, are similar, and that's important to keep in mind. So, let's turn to Isaiah 14. And we'll read from verses 12 to 17. Um... How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, how weakened the you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will as abo ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And here is actually the lie that he was trying to to impose on uh, Adam and Eve, you know? You will be like God. That was his uh, idea in the first place. I will be like the Most High. So that was, there was something envious and about him that wanted to exalt his name. Uh, and that's pride. In it, in it's, it, like, that's a 
the core of pride and the, the worst part of pride, to be like the most high. Uh, and then uh, we can, uh, let me see, to verse 17, yes. Um, Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest pit, death, deaths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the, the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed, it, destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of its prisoners? So it speaks about how he tried to exalt himself, himself, that didn't help a lot. He was actually thrown out of the heavens because um, no one can compete against God. And um, this also written, but I don't think we should focus too much on that, but we can also have a look at uh, um, Ezekiel, oh, just mention Ezekiel, uh, well, I can probably just mention it briefly here. Ezekiel uh, 28, where it reads that, um, 11 through 19. Um, yeah, here it reads about, we can read about how this was a very beautiful and people would um, look our, or it, w it was uh, something that was beautiful look, look up to, but still th that character was drawing the attention towards himself, not towards God. And, and that was the main sin, if you will. Um, we also can read from, um, we al al already read about uh, David in, in um, Second Samuel, so, you know, where, how he repented. I have sinned against the Lord, he already repented, and, um, but that's um, just having a heart that is soft and uh, moldable and that God can use. Uh, is really, really important. So we have to always, uh, what, um, often we have to just ask God, help me so that I don't become proud for the things that you're giving me. Because all the things that we have, they are essentially gifts that God has given us. You know, if, we, if people are intelligent, that's because God has given them high intelligence. They have given, or if people are creative, that's because God has given them gifts of creativity, and so on. That's always, and of course, musical skills are also something that is given us from birth by our, by our uh, a creator. Then we can always develop them, but at the same time, you know, it's basically, it's a gift, and at the core, it's, it's a gift that God has given us. Colossians 3, turn to that. Um, Colossians 3 and um, verse 16 to 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I would actually um, come with a kind of a statement here that everything, anything you do can be done as, a, as an act of worship to God. It can be a practical thing. It can be like a help. You are helping someone. That is also an act of worship because... It actually is, uh, you can all do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So whatever you do, whether people see it or not, do it un as until the Lord, as a service until the Lord. And that gives more meaning, you know, it, it, it helps us to gain a higher perspective of what we are actually doing. In uh, if, uh, Ephesians 1, it's, it reads here that we are in verses 3. To five, no, to six. Um, or we can read from verse four. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to, to adoptions 
as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. We are made, verse six, verse six, we are made to the praise of the glory of his grace. We are created to be, uh, created in his image, but in, we are created to be a praise and worship to, to God. That's why we are created. We are created to have a relationship and we are created to praise him, to focus on him, to point our attention to him. Um, then there is this story about the donkey. We'll read a little about the donkey from uh, Matthew chapter 21. Let's become a little familiar with the donkey. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately they will send them. He will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, lay, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. So let's just have, focus a little on this donkey. You know, what did he experience? He experienced that people were waving their um, uh, they were waving with, uh, what's that called in English, uh, branches from the trees, you know? Like, we, uh, when we do, when we celebrate, like in Norway, we, have, we will soon have our national day, we will wave with flags. Uh, and um, here they didn't have flags to wave, so they just take the branches from the trees and wave with them to greet, you know? And the donkey would feel, maybe the donkey could be like, feel like, Oh wow! They're just greeting we and tearing off the, the 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 branches on the on the trees to greet me. You know, look who I am here. I'm I'm the star. No one has done this to me before. And they were even laying out their clothes so that he could. Oh, it was soft and nice to step on for the donkey. You know, he could be really become really proud of being in this in this. Uh, situation but you know it wasn't for him at the it wasn't for him really it was for the king that was who was sitting on him and i think this is a very good picture for us that we are just a donkey <laughs> in in some sense we are here to carry or to help carry the presence of god into a place we are here to carry so to speak jesus into a place we are here to if if the donkey would think oh i'm here oh, i can i'd like to walk here and around the city and i'm the star you know that was you know we know how funny that sounds um but um it must have been a very fun fun thing for the donkey i think to uh, but he or the donkey had to be aware of the one that he was carrying the one that he was supposed to point the attention to. So, but that's actually a very good image and to keep in mind sometimes. And you are just, we are, as worship leaders, musicians, singers, uh, whoever we are actually, we, we are carriers and we want to carry the presence of God. We want to carry um, and, and make the way for Jesus to enter into wherever we were at. That's the role of a donkey. 
So we are just vessels for the glory of God to enter the, pla enter the place. We're just a tool, just a vessel. And um, this, the core of it all, it's not about musical skills or talents. It's about a heart attitude, as I mentioned before. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4, 23. 4.23 Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Uh, I also read it in the Amplified Bible, and it reads, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. And I don't know if you can see this picture here, but it's, you know, I think that was really <laughs> a very good picture. Uh, um, in the middle it reads the heart of worship, and there's a heart, and then there are some flowers springing out from it. And you know, this, the heart is wherever, you know, Jesus says that from, from the heart, everything flows out. Um, so be careful about what you let into your heart. Uh, um, and yeah, guard it with all the vigilance, as, is, as it reads here. Uh, it's also, as I have already touched a little, it's about the secret place. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus speaks about prayer. Here we can find the, the Lord's Prayer also. Um, uh, in chapter 6, we can turn, you know, Jesus points at something that we can all recognize, I think. At least most of us, at least some of us, at least me. I can sometimes <laughs> fall into that pit myself. In, in chapter Matthew 6 and verse 5, it reads, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stay pra st pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, <coughs> they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will, rewa will reward you openly. So the father sees in secret. It also says a bit later in the chapter about fasting. It's the same, actually the same point here. So when you're Close the door to the secret place. The Father in heaven will see you. He will reward you. And that's where it all starts. If I, if I just focus a little on, on leading worship, leading, being in a worship team, or have being a worship leader, you can't actually take people further than you have been, where you've been in the secret place yourself. It starts with... Whatever instrument you're playing, or we're just singing, singing out to the Spirit, um, praising the Lord with your voice or with a song, um, that's where you get tuned in. That's where you learn how to follow, how to flow with the Holy Spirit. And you can't take people further than where you've been in a secret place. That's actually what I'm thinking, and I'm, from my experience, what I'm seeing. Because apart from that, that will be only uh, like a superficial performance. I'm sorry to say it, but I think that's actually what, what, that's why I'm stressing this point about the heart matter. Because it must be ba based on your relationship with God. You must first and foremost minister to God. That's where, that's actually who you're ministering to. Also, when you are worshiping and leading worship in church, you're ministering to God. That's where, where the emphasis could be. So everything about worship begins and ends in the secret place. That's so, so, so important. And we don't need to be in a perfect place. You know, the world is not perfect. People, people are not perfect. I am not perfect. People are, I mean, people around us are not perfect. And situations are not perfect. That's, you know... That's how the world is. Of course, we will experience very many good things, happy things as well. But just keep in mind that 
worship the Lord at all times. Um, and, and have a, a life of worship where you sing to the Lord, you worship the Lord wherever you're at. You know, when I do the laundry, for instance, I can, you know, that's one of my secret places because I, I sort the, you know, the dark clothes with the white clothes and I'm sitting there still and I don't have anything. It's not really a, um, a, a, a job that takes a lot of my, I mean, the brain doesn't have to work very efficiently to do that kind of job. <laughs> and that's a very good place for me to be there, like, yeah. And then I, sometimes I listen to worship music, then I sometimes uh, pray in tongues or sing in tongues. Uh, I don't do that all the time, but that's a very good place. That's also a secret place. It doesn't have to be a very holy room where you have, uh, what do you call that, icons and very holy sacrifice room. You know, God lives within us, so you can turn to him wherever you're at, and the place that you make a worship place, that's actually a holy place for him, and that's really cool. That's what we can see, you know, in the Gospels as well, you know, Jesus meeting people in the daily life. Um, uh, so, I see that I'm skipping ahead of myself here, but <laughs> I'll get to that. So, musical skills are just a tool. It's like an extension of our hearts to, um, uh, and it's, it's, it's about the relationship with God. But of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not contradicting, and I'm not going against having rehearsals. I, I really believe that things should sound good. I mean, we have a soul, and we, it's easier for people to, to um, kind of um, devote themselves into worship when things sound okay or nice and it, it's a nice sound, and it's the, the chords are, you know, matching the, and the guitar and the piano and the bass, you know. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's not, that's not wrong, and that's really good to steward our gifts. But if I had to choose between those two, uh, to have people in my worship team, to have whether to choose between a very skillful musician, but he, who didn't really love the Lord, or he didn't, maybe, he was drawing attention to himself, or she was drawing attention to hims uh, himself, herself, or a person who had a, a humble heart that really loved the Lord, I would definitely choose the latter one, because um, that's also where the, the presence of God can enter in a more easy, in an easier way. Um, but I mentioned Matthew 25. I don't think I will t take time to read it, but that's about the talents that God, you know, gave, God gave um, ten, no, five and ten and one talents, I think it was something like that, and how God actually um, will keep us responsible uh, for how we steward our gifts. So that's also important. Um, so when you are a musician, a singer, Learn how to sing, learn how to play, do it, do it well, but also keep your heart. Main focus. Let's talk a little about David. He was, let's, let's turn to uh, 1 Samuel 16. And he going to learn a little about, or read a little about his first, his like, beginning when he was here. He was already. He was already. Um, he had already been anointed. Saul was the king at that point, and and he. Uh, let's see. Yes. But it, we can read from uh, yeah, First Samuel sixteen and verse seven. Uh, first of all, he says that when when uh, when Samuel is about to anoint someone from. Uh, Jesse's house, God says to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks, but for the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That was what God was looking for in the next king, and then he anointed David. And then uh, there is this distressing spirit that troubles Saul. Uh, and um, Saul sent for David because in, 
First uh, Samuel 16, again, uh, we will read on, um, on verse 17. Uh, provide me now a man who can play well and bring, it, bring him to me. And then one of the servants asked and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Wow, all these assets, you know, <laughs> all these positive things about him. And he was skillful in playing. So, very good. I mean, really good. But then the Lord was with him also. And that was even the more important thing. And we probably all know the story that he, he played for Saul and then the, the spirit, the evil spirit, lifted, you know, from, from him and relieved him, this uh, Saul. Um, he was also a mighty man of bravery, it reads. Uh, Psalms 34. Uh, yeah, I can just turn all this. Yeah, no, that's a bit further. Yep. Um, Psalms 34. It's probably a very familiar song for m most of you, but it's still a very important and good song. It's written by David. He wrote many of the Psalms. And we can read from verse, 30, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And then it reads, we can read on with how he exalts the Lord and and really lifts up God's name. But when we read the introduction here, it reads, a psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. So that's the context. Uh, I will read a little about that context. First Samuel 21. First Samuel 21, we'll skip to him again. First Samuel 21. <coughs> Because the story of David is a, is a really interesting one. He didn't have an easy life, that's for sure. But he kept close to God. Uh, and then we can see that he was rejected. Uh, let's see. Verse 10 to 15. Yeah. Uh, So he, uh, he was recognized, and then he pretended to be, be um, pretended madness in their hands. Scratched on the, yeah, it reads that from verse 13. So he changed his behavior before them, pretended madness in their hands, scratched on the doors of the gate, and let his saliva fall down on his beard. Then Akish said to his servants, look, you see the man is insane. Why have you brought him to me? And then he was rejected also from, he was rejected from, he was he was fleeing, you know, he was on the run from Saul. That's one thing. And he, then he came to some of his enemies and they also rejected him. So he had, I mean, he encountered so much of this reject, rejection. Uh, and then at the same time, he had been anointed the king. So he had this, uh, this uh, context where he, he knew that what God was before him, but everything looked like the opposite. Uh, so, uh, but at, in that context that we just read about, that's where he wrote this psalm about, I will praise the Lord at all times. And I think it's quite inspirational to hear that, wow, if God could pray, if David could praise God in, in a context where he was fleeing, not only from his so-called, well, his, his, um, uh, his own nation, but he also was fleeing from his enemies. And at the same, at the same time, he said, I will praise the Lord at all times. He kept the worship high in his heart. Um, 1 Samuel 30. Uh, different context. Still, um, where he reads here that... Um, 30 and well I always explain I think what's about as when when he's 
family have been taken, his, his wife, or yes, his wife and children, and all his men's families also have been taken captive by some enemies, by the Amalekites. And they had been, um, uh, looks like a very troublesome situation, and even David uh, says that, or it, it reads that, in verse 4, Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. You know, that's a really, really distressful situation where he had, and of course, it's very, very understandable. It's hard to understand what they actually went through here. But what did David do in this context? He was actually the people that he were, was with were also talking about maybe we should also kill him. You know, this, um, pe the people spoke of stoning him because, the, you know, everything happened here with his men. But what did David do? That's in verse 6. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So he knew where his strength was from. He knew that he would always draw strength from God when he sought, sought him. He didn't, he didn't uh, s kind of run away from God in that situation. And then he turned to God. He asked the Lord about for, for guidance, how to do, and then final story, end of the story is that um, David recovered all that in verse 18, David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away rescued his two wives and nothing on theirs was lacking um, so that's uh, that's a really happy ending of that story um, then he also had a heart to worship uh, in Second Samuel six, when they when they had when they got uh, found the, the ark of the Lord to to um, 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 yeah they they they, they um, brought the ark of the Lord up to up to Jerusalem to the city of David, uh, and we could say that. Um, uh, in from Second uh, Samuel six and verse fourteen, then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. Uh, and then, if we turn to verse twenty, then David returned to bless his household, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, "I would say," she said ironically, "How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself." Then David responds, "So David said to Michal, 'It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all this house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord of Israel. Therefore I will play music before the Lord." And I will be even more undignified than this, and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken, by them I will held in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. So David was also about to bless his house, but actually, Michal, she this kind of she. I think because she despised David from what how he worshipped, he. She, um, she, de she deprived herself of the, of the opportunity for a blessing. Um, and, um, and she said, uh, and David said, had said here that it was before the Lord. He was focused on worshiping the Lord with all his might, with all his power, with all his strength, which is, you know, the how to love the Lord with all the power, might, and strength, and a mind. Uh, and he said that he would be even more dignified than that if needed. That was when he was a king. He, you know, imagine a high ruler in our modern society that would do the same thing. It's, we would have be a bit astonished. I think I would sell as well. But when you know that it's before the Lord, that you, you praise the Lord with all your might, that's when you do not focus on what people think about you as you worship. That's what uh, Darlene Czech, the former worship leader of uh, Hillsong, Sydney, Australia, she's, she has a book um, with the title Extravagant Worship. You know, that's pouring your heart out for God 
and doing uh, as much as possible or even more than maybe you should because you love the Lord so much. And that's the focus, to do it before the Lord. Um, well, the final scripture is uh, Habakkuk 3. That's the last verse, and we'll read it now at the end. It's not always easy to find those small prophets, but I'll try. Yeah, here she is. That's kind of in the same way of, of talking about I will bless the Lord at all times. Though the fig tree may not blossom, verse um, Habakkuk 3, verse 17. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may cut, be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the storms, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, he will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. So yet, although everything does, is dark, fruitless, fields yield no food, all this is really, I mean, they are all up at the point that where they could easily just starve to death. It focuses on, I will, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And then the joy of the Lord is our strength, and it brings us through. Somehow God will make a way when we give him the room through our worship. So that was what, what I had in my heart. Uh, we have, uh, my husband and I have talked about before we started this, that he, uh, he could, we could probably have a short conversation also about this worship thing, so I can welcome him to the podium. And uh, I'm very, very happy to stand with this stable man of God. So. Yeah, thank you. And Thank you so much for, for this, this teaching, it was so great. Uh, and um, what, what I was thinking maybe we could just talk a little bit about is, is uh, uh, how, how to, you know, uh, you are a worship leader. And, and uh, of course there is, there, is, uh, uh, there is a practical part of it in a way uh, that... Uh, it's, it's like uh, we, we, we have now been teaching f for two times about, you know, the, the, the scriptures and, and, and uh, the theology behind praise and worship. Uh, but how do you, for instance, wh when, uh, when you uh, going to find the songs, for instance, wh how, what is this, the, the, the process of choosing the songs? that you, you actually use in, in, in the worship time? Yes, uh, that's a very good and important question. Um, it's like you, um, I, I never choose songs that haven't uh, touched me first. I think that's actually a very important thing to keep in mind that don't just pick songs that don't, that are just cool to sing, you know? There are, there are really fun songs to sing and, and but there should be, I'm always looking for songs that have some sort of breakthrough in them. That way you can feel that you really can worship the Lord. And it could be fast songs and it could be much rhythm and it could be praise and worship and, you know, party party <laughs> in church. Um, or it could be like a very calm worship song. But it's something about the nerve that is like that uh, kind of you sense that it's born of God. It's something that, it's a song that is born, not just written. I think you can just dis distinguish between the two and, and just sense that there is something that touches your heart. Because out from that, that's also something that can touch other people. Uh, here, here in, in, in when we have worship time and, and song, sing songs of praise and so on, uh, we, uh, we often feel that the presence of lo the Lord is, is coming into into the room, and 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 we really feel His His glory and so on. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, you can be worshiping in in a 
other places or, or maybe here also but and and we don't feel this this the presence of the lord coming um, what do you think is 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 the most important or, or yeah what do you think is 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 actually bringing the presence of the lord i think it's uh, um, I think we need time. I think that's that's one important thing. Um, we shouldn't be in a rush when we worship God. Um, I would rather say that if if you don't have too much time, maybe just focus on one song. I, I mean, it really ask your pastor or whoever is leading to make room for enough time to let the presence of God fall. It, I mean, it's Apart from that, I would say that it's just a performance thing. If if you don't feel the break, if you don't sense the breakthrough, if you don't sense the presence of God falling, then it's just performance. To to be honest, um, so you need enough time. And I would also, I from my experience, it's better to. Like when there is a song that you feel this is the song that you should sing and you feel that there is a good flow in it. You don't sing it through like verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, and that's it. Like a setup. You can do that. And sometimes that would work. But just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And that's what I was thinking when I spoke about the secret place. That's in the secret, it's in, it's in the secret place when it's only you and God. And it's only you and God. <laughs> That's where the, it all starts. Uh, where you can experience to be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, and I think it's very helpful. I think it's actually essential to be filled with the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. I think that releases a lot of that s um, sensitivity to be, um, to be flowing with the Holy Spirit. But to spend, when you sing a song, don't rush, rush through it, but Sing it maybe one verse again because you feel led to that, you know? Be sensitive to it. And, um, and sing in tongues also. I think that's also essential. That's what we experience here, that when we s sing in tongues and we just release, I mean, we set ourselves free, to, so to speak. Sometimes we sing out in, in our own language also. But sing out freely in the spirit, that's also uh, helps a lot to, to release the presence of God. I think it's, it's extremely important what you said about about being actually uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit to be be a worshiper, um, and and you know uh, you read uh, a scripture in the in the beginning here uh, about uh, where God is requiring from the worshippers, the true worshippers, to be worshiping in in spirit and in truth. Um, what do you think is is you know what is this ens the essence of of this uh, to to worship in spirit and in truth? Um, I would say, well, how can I answer that? I would think th would think that uh, like in spirit, being connected with the spirit, being aware of that the spirit is the the boss, is the the guide who will guide you through it. Don't just think I will do it my own way, but just try to be aware of that God and be be aware of that that that's that He will guide you, that spirit to spirit, as I was mentioning before, and also the thing about in truth that it's not only performance or outward appearance thing, um, but it's most the most important thing is that it's it's truly connected to your heart and with. Yeah, it's it's flowing out from your heart. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if 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 you're gonna s give, uh, no, there may might be me be somebody that is, you know, have a, have a calling into become a worshiper, a worship leader, or something like that. Uh, what would you say uh, to that person uh, if you're gonna give some? good advices from from your life and and what have propelled you into uh, your ministry uh, what what yeah do you have some 
some good advices for for uh, for that person yes if 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 you are if you really feel that you have a heart you know you can kind of sense it if um if you if you listen to worship music and and it gives you uh, you it really makes you want to sing and play and it's really kind of inspires you in that direction that that could be a very uh, a, a very good indication that that that's something that God has for you um because God guides us by what we you know he puts desires on our hearts that are connected with our natural abilities also so that's you know if you if you are a person who who loves music somehow and you you're maybe practicing to learn um but as i was stressing before you must start at in the secret place always spend time with god with your guitar with your whatever you play with your drum <laughs> i don't know there are so many instruments that you can use to play and, and worship the lord out from your instruments sometimes i've just been sitting in my own house or, or before also i don't know with the piano I, I didn't have a piano before so i had a guitar and i was playing at home uh, that helped me le learn a little more guitar so that was positive or the piano and this playing helped me sometimes that's the way i pray you know that i just play out from my heart and i feel god guiding me uh being kind of uh, flowing with the spirit so spend time with god in the secret place close the door if possible if you have a door that you can close and spend time with god on your own and then i highly recommend you to uh, serve in the church that you're in or find a church where you can serve um i believe in being trained and i believe in um serving um not not striving for as i was not striving for a position that's really dangerous to strive for a position to be out front and be seen by others i, I tell you that's that's kind of the spirit that drove lucifer you know to his fall be just be very very careful about that um and and um, ask god to help you in that if that's a uh, pitfall for you uh so serve with others sometimes i'm on my on my journey uh and i'm not that far yet you know there is there are many things that i'd like to experience and so on but i've served in a, a church bef another church before and i learned a lot and i was really really blessed by the ministry and um and then there was a point in time where I, because I, I love playing the piano, that's my, uh, my main instrument. And, and there were two piano players in that worship team. And then the, the other piano player got the chance more than I did to play the piano more. And I was just put on the synthesizer, you know, you did the easier stuff. And I was a bit, I must admit, I was a bit annoyed about that. <laughs> but then God actually spoke to me about that. Just do not lift up your own horn you know that uh, uh, that i read about do not try to promote yourself do not try you know with sharp elbows as you say in norwegian but just allow you know that person to flow freely in his gifts and then kind of in not too long time the person actually chose another type of ministry and i got the piano <laughs> but it's, it's important to keep your heart and Ask God to keep your heart. Yeah, that is extremely important. That is that goes for whatever ministry. It's so important mm. to to be be humble, to 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 be able to serve under somebody before God will promote you. Is is that is the the, the basic uh, principle of uh, of growing into a ministry is to be humble and to 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 be through in the small things. And then God will promote you. Um, and and um, I just just want to want to say that uh, to to you that listen is is so important with praise. It's so important to 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 get the, the the presence of God into the church. That is the whole concept, the whole point of being a church. We are supposed to be this 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 uh, house that that God can fill with his presence. And, and their praise is the main tool in that. 
And, and, and um, so, so shall we just pray for, for the worshipers? Um, and, and just, uh, Father, we, we just release your blessing upon each and every one that you have called into the ministry of praise and worship. I just release your blessing upon them. And I release your anointing in Amen. Jesus' Amen. name upon Jesus them. Name. Let them grow and, yes. and, and listen to your Holy Spirit's mm. guidance Amen. in their worship. Yeah. And, and I just pray, <laughs> God, that you, <laughs> that you restore the, the, the tabernacle of David Amen. and, and the, the mm. presence of yes. God in each and every church represented here. Amen. And, and I just pray that you come with your glory and, and let the worshipers lead the way, you know. You mm -hmm. set, the, set them in the front of the army and yes. let them go and, and, and just release your presence Amen. in your church. Hallelujah. Jesus, in Jesus' oh. name we pray. Amen. 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 And we just release the gifts that everyone has and I also release opportunities to develop the gifts and to serve and if there is anyone who is not speaking in tongues and who is not uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, we just release the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon those who want it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Christine, uh, my, my lovely wife, uh, and a uh, very, very, very good preacher also, so that's good. <laughs> Thanks for encouraging me. He's, <laughs> he's my support, you know. He always encourages me, so that's, that's really, really great. Uh, and uh, next uh, Wednesday, actually, we, we start a new topic uh, about spiritual warfare, uh, which is actually also quite connected to, to praise and worship, because praise and worship is one of the, the, the weapons that God has given us into this spiritual battle that we are actually in. Uh, so so uh, next time it's, it's uh, André Bordswick, uh, one of the, the great teachers we have here in the church, uh, s uh, that is going to teach about this subject for two Wednesdays now. So I hope you will tune in next Wednesday, 7 o'clock Central European time, and uh, I hope that you get, will have a great uh, week and, and uh, that we that we have been blessed by this teaching. So God bless you and uh, hope we see you next Wednesday in Jesus name. Amen.